Hello, it's Phil Thatch, and today I'm excited to be doing an unboxing video on a camera that I ordered just a little while earlier. Actually, I ordered it today is Thursday, and I ordered it last Friday. And after four days, B&H still had not shipped this thing, so I actually called them and said, hey, what's up? I've never had you guys wait four days to ship before, and the, the fellow apologized, said they've been really busy, and he upgraded my shipping for free to overnight and here it is the next day. So, uh, pretty good sized box. Should make sure and cover up my address when I pick the box up. And let's get this thing open. So I did, uh, Heather and I did a video yesterday. Uh, we actually did a live stream last night and talked about, uh, packing slip talked about going in this direction uh, and a lot of people or not a lot of people but some people misunderstood and thought that I was leaving Nikon like I'm done with Nikon but that couldn't be further from the truth but I do want to try out some other brands you know I tried I tried Fuji uh, with the X-T3 that I bought I tried it for about a year year and a half Decided I didn't like it, sold all of that, and now I'm trying Canon, and this is the Canon EOS or EOS. People who are in the know, people who are actually Canon people, do me a favor in the comments and tell me, is it pronounced EOS? You can say it's pronounced say the letters, or is it pronounced EOS? You can say it's pronounced say the word, because I always say EOS, but I think it's EOS. I don't really know. So here is the box for that. And I got the kit, which is interesting. The kit uh, comes with a 24 to 105 f4 to 7.1 lens, which should be in this box. And I also ordered, just so I could have a prime, I got the Nifty 50, which is nicely priced at $199. So I'm excited about that. And I got one of those crappy bags, you know, uh, you might as well get the crappy bag while it's for free that, that sometimes B&H will throw in. And they also threw in a memory card, but the, the funny thing about this memory card, the camera uses UHS-2 SD cards, and the memory card they threw in was a UHS-1. Now it's a pretty fast one, it's 170 megabyte a second UHS-1 uh, 64 gig memory card, but I, I don't know, uh, we'll see how that does the, the files ought to not be huge on this camera because it's just 20 megapixels but i think maybe some of the video that i record uh, might be pretty huge and i'm going to turn this box upside down and let it be my table all right we'll start we'll start with the camera box look at that woohoo that's nice Got a nice open tab. I like to keep my boxes in good shape so you won't see me slamming stuff around like some other uh, um, unboxers do. Some assorted papers. A really thick, if not large, manual. And here is the battery. And I'm gonna go ahead right now, right in the middle of while I'm making this video, and get this battery plugged into the wall. Let's get some power going on this battery. I don't know exactly how to take that off. I guess I do it like that. Looks like you slide it into the charger like that. So, excuse me, I'm gonna get this on some AC. I have a whole charging area right over here just out of frame and I want to get that thing charged up as soon as possible. All right. Charging is happening. Here's some more bags. Here's a strap, pretty good looking strap. EOS R6, EOS R6, one of those. Pretty cool, I doubt I will put that on the camera. And I'm gonna try to kind of keep these things in order. I just sold lots of gear and it was, it was hard for me to figure out how to put everything back in the box just right. 
and you, you never know. I may fall in love with this camera and keep it forever, or I may sell this camera. But right now, I am turning my phone on silent. And this looks like this must be the lens. Let's do the, yeah, let's do the lens first. Let's, we'll do this kit lens first. Uh, they, they kit this camera with either the 24 to 105 F4. And if they do, it's funny, I priced them separately. If you buy the kit with the 24 to 105 F4, you actually spend one penny more, which I thought was funny, than if you bought them separately. And if you kit it with this lens, it saves you a hundred dollars. And I, I like, look how small it is. I like the idea of this lens for being really, really small. And I also like, I, from what I understand, it even has a relatively close minimum focus distance. So you can do some semi macro work with it. So this will be a great uh, all around. I mean, it's slow at 105, it's F7.1, but I think this would be, uh, is going to turn out to be a really good lens for landscape photography. Uh, box is right in my face, sorry about that. For landscape photography where you, uh, you don't need a fast lens, you don't need an F2.8 or, or you know anything really fast for landscape photography, what you need is lightweight and a lot of range uh, so you can hike. But it does have a, it's got a focus control switch and a stabilizer on and off switch and it has a, there's the zoom ring. And this is, this ring is the focus or control ring. So you can switch this switch in one direction and this can do manual focus, or you can switch it in another direction and this control ring can do something that you program that ring to do. So you program it in your, cam in your camera body. You can have it do aperture and I'm not sure what all, cause like I say, I've just got this camera, but you can do a lot of things with that. I think I'll probably have it on focus cause I like to manual focus on landscape photography which is what I'll probably use this lens for. Although it's, this will probably be a good walk around lens for street photography too as well. And I'll, uh, if I vlog with the R6, this lens will probably be, probably be what I use because it's at 24, which is the, the uh, that's where you'd be vlogging, it's F4, which is, it's not fast, but it ought to have some uh, out of focus quality. So there is the lens. I don't know why I'm putting it back in the bag, but I started, so I'm going to continue. All right, now I'm going to move this box out of the way because I realized during that last shot, the box was covering up my face half the time. Sorry about that. Whoa, don't fall. It is a bag of camera, and it looks like this, uh, this piece of tape that is uh, holding the little soft bag closed might have the serial number on it. Okay, there it is. I, you know, I, I, I'm making this video with my Nikon Z6. I, I wish I had used my Z50 because I could compare the size for you. But uh, I've heard some people say it, it feels really plasticky, but it doesn't. It, it actually feels, I mean, it feels rubberized. I guess maybe it's plasticky in some spots, but apparently the second layer down is magnesium. I, I've been worried about this this roller right here, which I'm going to program to be aperture. I think a lot of Canon people put shutter speed right there. I've been worried that it will be awkward to get to because I'm used to Nikons, which have the, the roller on the front. But actually, now that I actually have it in my hand, it feels pretty natural. It's actually a little bit awkward reaching up to this knob. I'll have to get used to that. And of course, this does have a flip screen, which you won't find on any Nikons. And I don't know how, I, of course I'll love that for, for vlogging, blah, 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 blah. But I don't know how much I'm gonna like it for landscape photography because, uh, you know, if I'm doing a low shot and, and I need to hold the camera, the, where I would wanna hold it with my other hand, the screen's gonna be in the way. So that'll be, um, that'll be interesting to learn about. Let's open it up here. Got a spot for two cards, that's nice. I like this control wheel right here on the back. All right, so there's the camera. I've got one other thing to unbox, uh, and that is the Nifty 50. 
pretty excited about this. You know, it's it's all everybody should have a 50 millimeter 1.8 in their bag. Uh, although I will say that the Nikon Z shooters, the 50 millimeter 1.8 1 costs almost $600. So maybe I, I maybe you shouldn't unless you're really going to use it. But for $199, which is you know kind of the normal price of a 50 millimeter 1.8 for full frame. I can't imagine why you wouldn't have it because the lens is so useful. Look how small it is. It's got the same switch as the other lens, focus and control for this ring that you can have for either focus or control, obviously. And uh, 50 millimeter 1.8 STM with 43 millimeter thread. Uh, looks, looks nice. Can't wait, to, can't wait to try it out. Now I gotta figure out how to set this thing up. All right, so let's talk about some first impressions. It's now a few days later. Uh, the unboxing was actually the unboxing. That was the first time I'd ever seen the camera. And since then, I've had a chance to uh, get out and shoot with the camera some. Uh, I was able to uh, program everything kind of like I wanted it. This uh, top command dial I have set for aperture. This other top command dial that's accessible from the back of the camera I have set for shutter speed. And this dial, which is a circle, it looks like a directional pad, but it's not. You spin it. I have this set for ISO. So that's really cool. And then on these, uh, on these Canon R cameras, there's also a, another control. Uh, of course, you, on this particular lens, this 24 to 105 lens, you've got zoom. And then there's another control, and you can flip a switch where it's either focus for manual focus or control. And with this control, I have it set to do, um, if I'm in an automatic mode, like, um, like automatic ISO or shutter priority or aperture priority, one of the automatic modes, I can do exposure compensation with this. So if the, if the subject's backlit, you can be looking right through the, the EV and say, oh, look, it's backlit. My subject is underexposed. You can just turn it to the right and, and increase your uh, exposure compensation a little bit and fix the shot. And that's the same thing on this lens as well. I think all of the RF lenses have that dial. And uh, both of these two are selectable between focus or control. So the, 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 uh, the ring has two functions. Uh, on this lens, I bought the, um, I bought the 100 to 500 lens and it has a zoom ring and a focus ring and a separate control ring so you can always do manual focus override even if you're using uh, the control ring for exposure compensation and you can program it for other things too but i thought exposure compensation worked the best uh, i'll talk more about this lens in another video but uh, I've, I've made a few uh, test photos to show you. Um, nothing major, just kind of shooting around the house. I haven't been on any major excursions um, using the 50 millimeter 1.8 or this lens. You know, this lens, uh, this is the 24 to 105 and it's not the, they're, they're, they make a 24 to 105 that is continuous f4, uh, but this one is the f4 at 24 to 7.1 at 105. And I figured this will be a good landscape photography lens. It seems to be really sharp. I've, I've made a few shots with it, probably more with the 50 millimeter 1.8, the nifty 50, um, than with this other lens. But this lens is definitely going to get a lot of use because I love landscape, waterfall, uh, that sort of thing, photography. And I'm really going to enjoy using lens, this lens for that. I haven't done much yet, but I'll show you some photographs now um, that I've made with the camera in early testing. All right, so everyone is interested in tracking. So I had my buddy Ray over to the house for just a few minutes and the camera wasn't even set up yet. We were doing focus on the actual shutter button instead of back button focus. But this is 12 frames a second uh, with the 50 millimeter F1.8 shooting at one four thousandths of a second. I think ISO was automatic and I just kind of walked towards Ray in a weird pattern and we'll see what happens this was 12 like say 12 frames a second these are straight out of the camera jpegs and so far it is absolutely bagging good focus on my eyes as i wander around like an idiot i 
have to look down. I think it I think it might have missed a little bit on that one. Not bad, but a little. But all the rest of these are perfect. Let's see if it misses any more. Perfect. Mm, might have missed a little there. Maybe, I don't know. Might have missed a little there. Still pretty doggone good. I think it's a little off there. Perfect right there. And that could be, you know, that's a $200 lens. So that could, some of that could be the speed of that lens. All right, so this is made with the 24 to 105, and this was at 105, wide open at 7.1. And this one I have edited and I've run it through Topaz Denoise on this 6400 ISO shot. So let's look at, this is, this is a raw file straight out of the camera. And you can see some noise up here, but it's not bad. And the, the cat looks fantastic. And that's our cat, Ruby. And we'll go back and look at, this is after running through Topaz Denoise AI and doing a, just a really simple edit. And you can see Topaz was able to get rid of all the noise. So, you know, I, I highly recommend using Topaz. And this camera, the noise is super easy to clean up, even at crazy high ISOs like 6400. And this is a shot. This, this one's been cleaned up as well. This is Heather's dog, Libby. And I made this shot with the 50 millimeter 1.8. Uh, and... I just thought it came out really pretty. This is just around the house, 3200 ISO, wide open at 1.8 at 1 125th of a second. I've also purchased and installed on the camera an L bracket, speaking of landscape photography, and it's crazy. You know, you're kind of a, a whoever makes the L bracket for the camera, you have to kind of pay whatever price they pay, but this one is custom fit for the R6 and R5. It's made by a company called Small Rig and it was only 29 bucks pretty cool and it's they small rig often includes their little screwdriver thingamabob that magnetically seals to the bottom of the camera they also have lots and lots of quarter 20 um, mounts all over their l brackets and it has a cutout right here so you can flip your screen out and still be able to look up and down uh, if you're doing a shot that requires your screen to, oh, I'm not on the screen. You, you can flip it out and put your screen here and that cutout in the L bracket makes room for that. So I'm really liking the small rig L bracket for the EOS R6 and R5 so far, especially the price, $29. So thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned to the channel. I'll have lots more Canon R6 content coming up uh, and I'll still, uh, for you Nikon folks, I'll still have plenty of stuff with my Z50 and my Z6 and Heather's Z50. So there'll still be plenty of Nikon content coming. And I, I look forward to having you folks along with me for the ride. Let's make some pictures. Bye-bye.